In the process shown here, we've gone ahead and added a bill of materials. So we go to the BOM option up at the top here, and you can see the items that have the material items on it. You can see if I hover over these, it shows us what they are here. So each one of the ones in blue here do have one or more materials associated with them. Now we want to show this on our work instructions, for instance. So we can go to the summary and we go to our work instructions. We pick our default at the top here, browse. I'm just going to call it WI1. And of course, when we generate them here, there's no column in here for the part numbers and so forth. So we want to add the part numbers, the part description and the quantity to the output format here. And since we've already got them loaded in Timer Pro, we can go ahead and do that here. So we close this here. Obviously, there's no, nothing in there to do that. We're going to go here, go to our file, go to Options, and go to the General Options here. Select the settings, open the work instruction format you want to work with. This is a default work instruction, and we click on it. This is exactly the one we just saw coming up in the screen here. What we're going to do is add three columns here. So I'm just going to copy one of these. has all the format I'm looking for and paste it in here. Right, and this one I'm going to call uh, part description. I should put this one here. Part description. This one's going to be part number. And this is going to be the quantity. So now I have my headings in here. And what I'm going to do now is come down here to the row here where I have my other entries for the data items here. I go into the part description, double click here. And one of the items we have down here is the parts data. See part description, part number, quantity, unit of measure, unit cost. All of this is available to include it in your process. So I'm going to go part description here. Next one is going to be part number. And next one is going to be the quantity. So when I've entered all the fields here, I then go and I click on the save here. And it saves the parameters here. Now I probably want to put the quantity as a center of that value. So I can go and come in here. I'm just going to come go down this column here and just make that centered here. Okay, so that's going to make that go centered here. So now I come in a new format here. I save this and I close out of it. Let's go back here to our process here. I'm going to do the same thing. Again, it's the same one. I go to my uh, summary. I go to the work instructions. Let me say work instructions. And I'm going to browse it again. We call this one WI2, work instruction 2. And I just click on the open and click OK. And now you can see I've got additional fields here. And it's populating the data in there for me in the appropriate column. Okay, so you can see here we've already got part description, part number, and a part quantity in here as well. If we go back to perhaps the mount wheels here, you can see here there's one item associated with the secure force. Let's make it a little bit bigger here so you can see it better. 100% here. There's one item, a screw associated with secure four screws, and there's four of them there. And then there's a get casing, and there's uh, some materials here. So this is our mount wheels. So if I go back over here, go to our bill of material here. Here's the mount wheels. There you can see the one item associated with the secure four screws and the two items associated with the uh, get casing here. And this one over here, for instance, in the stack parts, you can see I've got five items associated with this one and one item associated with that one. So if I go back to my uh, work instruction here and go to the stack parts, you can see what it does. It's making space here to accommodate the part numbers. It's automatically going to do that for you here so that everything lays out correctly. It's very obvious that these parts are associated with this particular item right here. So again, to include the part description and part number and so forth in your outputs, you have to go back and add them to the design for your work instructions.